Hello again. Um, I'm going to have a go at doing just a quick look at uh, a relatively new feature, which is this custom options tab in Recoras. Um, I think anyone that's made any custom auras, which is probably pretty much anyone that's interested in these videos that I make, uh, has found that as soon as you share them with anybody else, they want just subtly different things to what you'd intended when you made it whether it's slightly different colours or different positionings and that kind of thing. And custom options is the way to provide that for users in a way that doesn't require them to go and edit your code directly. You know, however, however easy you might try to make it for them. Uh, you know, usually we would have put things in the init where they could, you know, very easily configure things. But still, there's a really big chunk of the weak or user base that want things just how they want them but really aren't comfortable with editing code at all and so this is a fantastic feature for custom aura creators to provide all these kinds of settings for users uh, so i'm gonna i've made basically one of each of the type of controls that we can make um, and so i'm just going to go down them uh, talk through any kind of oddities or things that might be kind of gotchas that you might not expect would be factors um, so first of all, when you go into custom options tab, um, this is the user mode. So this is what users will see and what they can interact with. They can toggle things on and off and so, so on. Uh, but at the bottom is enter author mode. And so this is what you'll be interacting with when you create the uh, controls. So say you make a color picker, uh, you give it a name that people will see and a key. Uh, this is uh, like a table key and so uh, this will be uh, the value under which or the key under which um, the colour values will be saved which you'll access later on. Uh, all controls have an optional tooltip uh, which I really would advise everyone to use. Uh, you can put any little bits of guidance in there for users. Um, and then back in user mode and then mouse over you can see the text just up to the to the right there uh, and so as I was saying you choose a key there I had I called it col for color um, and these are available in your code in the orenv.config um, table and so any settings you make will be a key on that table which will house the information. Back to custom options tab. So we've got colour pickers, uh, toggles, simply a boolean, true or false. Uh, description, so you can put some text in, uh, you can pick a size for the text and uh, this is now formatable with escape sequences, just the standard uh, ones in WoW. I'll try and link to a wiki page about escape sequences on the YouTube description if I remember. Um, so this one I've put in uh, a skull uh, texture and I've also coloured one of the words. So if I go back to user mode you can see I've got the texture there and one of the words. Uh, and also I've coloured a value on this toggle list when we get down to that. So there's pretty much anywhere where you can enter text to be seen you can uh, colour things and use any of the escape sequences uh, back to author mode then so a uh, string you can just get them to give you a string toggle list so now you could make a whole lot of separate toggles um, what a toggle list does is it puts uh, a series of toggles all under a single heading so if that kind of makes sense for your layout then go with it and it also lets you set defaults for each of these uh, each of these setups number provides a number so uh, you get to set the bounds of this so you get to set a minimum number so if someone if you set it to zero and someone types in minus three then that'll uh, error out it like it won't go in at all whatever value they put similarly a max and also a step size so in this case 
it's got to be between 0 and 1 with a step size of 0 0.05. If they put in 0 0.13, then it would uh, round up to 0 0.15. Sliders are very similar to numbers. Uh, you've got the min, max and step size again. But there's also this soft min, soft max. And that is what the slider will show. But, and that doesn't necessarily need to be identical to what's uh, possible for users to put in. So in this case, we've got a slider that will show from 0 to 50. And as you slide it, it will step up in whole integer increments. But uh, the control will allow for users to put in values from minus 100 up to plus 100 uh, with half, uh, half whole numbers. So if we go into user mode and have a look at that, we've got this slider 0 to 50, which we can slide up and down. But if we wanted to put in minus 33, then that's uh, a perfectly fine entry for them to put. So it's kind of like you might suggest... Uh, and a rough number, but if they want to go crazy and put something different in, then they can do. And last one is a drop down menu. <coughs> uh, you get to define the uh, options that will be available in the drop down. Oh, and also, actually, there is a, a space uh, uh, object. So, just I suppose a word on the layout of this whole page. Um, the way it works as it uses the ace config stuff and so it's it's all it all goes back to how that works but the width of this panel is two basically um, and most of these objects when you first create them, will default to being one wide and so you would fit two of these objects next to each other you could make them 0 0.66 wide and then get three of them in a row or as I've done here, I've put them all to just a width of two, so they each take a full width, uh, just to kind of make it simpler to go down the list of them. So you've got quite a lot of options for laying things out, uh, but for those times where you might want, uh, say, a string control only take up half the, the width of the panel, but you don't want the next thing to jump in directly next to it, you would put in a spacer object there that's a width of one, to take up the rest of the of the entire width of the panel and set the next control you know the next next point down uh, recently they added a uh, vertical um, space and if I go back to author mode so previously it was just width and so you you're just filling up you know whichever line you're on uh, but there's also now a height so you can actually apply some some vertical space between controls, which makes it easier. Uh, previously, we were like putting spaces into the fronts of descriptions to try and create space. So much more convenient to just have those spaces. So we've got all these controls. If I just add a color in. So we've got all these controls. Uh, as custom authors, we want to be able to get that information out of there. Uh, so let's have a look at what those controls will provide us. I've kind of written out what you would expect to see in each of these things. Uh, and so the colour uh, actually will return a table, an array, uh, with values from 0 to 1 in the order red, green, blue and alpha, which is... Uh, basically the order that most controls in WoW will want you to return things. So like if you're using set vertex color on a texture or uh, even weaker as color animations wants it in, in that order. Um, so if I uncomment this, uh, so we're just going to dump the value of that color table. As you can see down here in my chat. It's printed the red, green, blue, and alpha values there. Uh, and so in uh, in an aura, chances are what you'll be doing is actually using unpack. Which takes them out of the array and just lists them in that order. So if you're using it in a color animation, a weak or as color animation, you could use unpack to do that. 
Uh, or if you just wanted the red for whatever reason, then or in the config call one is the red value, you know, two is green and so on. So yeah, we colors will take the color from the color picker and it will give you an, a nice array to use. Uh, toggle, very simple, it's either a true or a false, so you get a boolean from that. A number is a number, obviously strings a string. A drop down actually gives you a number. I think intuitively uh, you might think, uh, so here's our drop down. We've got these three options. Uh, I think intuitively we might feel like if someone's picked val2 there, then uh, what we would get back from the control would be the string val2. But actually it's a number. It's the that In that case it would be the number 2, so it's the second thing. Uh, toggle list is another table uh, that's being returned. So going back to our toggle list, we've got these three entries. Uh, if they were all ticked, then you get an array with three trues in it. If you know three is unticked, then you'd get an array with true, true, and false, and so on. Uh, slider is a number, and that's dropped down again. So, um, at this point, hopefully you understand how to set up the page and how to get the information out. At that point, um, the possibilities are pretty huge. So hopefully everyone will really start digging into ways to give their users more options and to uh, use this page more. I, I really hope it will take off. I think it's a very cool idea. And the more people use it, and the more people see it being used, I think it will um, snowball and just get bigger. Anyway, uh, do put any questions uh, on the YouTube uh, comments if you've got any. And anything else you'd like to see me make videos about, just let me know. That's it for now. Cheers. Bye.